dear viewers welcome to my course on introduction to machining and machining fluids i am myself dr mamila ravishankar assistant professor at uh, iit guwahati in the department of mechanical engineering welcome to my course in this class i am going to start about what is the syllabus of this course why we have to study this course and all those things okay so the first why we have to study this course on manufacturing is the one thing so the one of the primary courses in manufacturing is machining and machining fluids also plays a major role that's why we are going to study in this course on machining and machining fluids so if you see the manufacturing plays a very major role in any country's gdp so as a developing nation india if at all want to move ahead so their manufacturing has to be improved a lot if you see the many companies like honda g and all those these are companies are the one of the good companies in the manufacturing arena and they are expanding their bases in india because they play a major role in manufacturing okay so if you see in this slide you can see the temple pillars also developed based on machined components if you see the pillars these are all machined using the machining processes okay so coming to the syllabus we are going to see what is the syllabus of introduction to machining and machining fluids so the overview of this course chapter 1 to 8 we have complete chapters so the chapter 1a introduction to machining 1b principles of machining or metal cutting so coming to the chapter 2 we have the cutting tools and cutting forces chapter 3 we have tribology and surface roughness in machining thermal aspects in machining so chapter 4 deals with tool wear and tool life tool materials and tool coatings So chapter 5 we deal with cutting fluids and its application eco friendly cutting fluids and chapter 6 deals with multi point machining processes where which is called as the practical machining processes chapter 7 we deal with abrasive machining processes and chapter 8 we deal with machining of advanced materials and machining advances in machining processes okay so this is the overview however i am going to explain you in detail what i am going to teach so in the chapter 1 introduction to machining we are going to see the importance of manufacturing why the manufacturing is important uh, for a mechanical engineer at the same time why the manufacturing is important for a country and all those things so the second we deal with the basic approaches in manufacturing there are two approaches one is top down approach and bottom up approach in the manufacturing however we are going to study mostly top down approach where we take the solid stock and we do the machining process to the required shape so we don't touch the bottom up approach however we give some introduction to the bottom up approach like 3d printing and all those things the importance of machining and machining fluids so in the manufacturing we have to see what is the major role of machining and machining fluids as per the course is concerned why the machining is important for manufacturing why machining fluids are important what are the problems with the cutting fluid and how we have to make the machining process a sustainable process which is what the nowadays world is looking at so then we goes to then we go to introduction to machining what is the machine tool and what is the cutting tool what is the difference between a machine tool and a cutting tool and all those things the overview of various machining processes we will do then we go to the 1b where principles of metal cutting or machining we deal with so mechanism of plastic deformation so normally machining process is considered as the severe plastic deformation process if you see the stress strain diagram the machining starts from this position so the machine machining starts after the severe plastic deformation the fracture starts from there the machining starts so the mechanism machining of ductile materials which is shown in this uh, stress strain diagram so the machining starts from this position so the machining of brittle materials 
where the stress strain graph will be slightly different which we deal when we are going to into the complete uh, in detail the course. Then introduction to machining region, what is the machining region, what are the zones, what is the shearing zone, chip tool interface and all those things. What is the sticking zone, what is the sliding zone, sticking zone refers to where the metal metal interaction is there and in sliding zone the chip moves and upgrades. So, we also deal with chip formation and types, what are the different types of chips forming and all those things. And we also measure practically and theoretically, we also deal with the uh, chip thickness measurement direct method and indirect method. So, in the chapter 2, we, do, we deal with the tool geometry and tool signatures. In the tool signatures, we deal with American standard system that is AAC system, ORS system, MRS system and NRS system. Some of the systems I will teach you and some of the systems I may give some assignment also, so that you can also learn in a good way. The selection of uh, tool angles, what, uh, how to select the rake angle, what is the importance if I select more rack angle, less rack angle and all those things, flank angles and the cutting edge angles, if at all I want to choose for particular operation. So, how to choose? You can see in this picture, what are the angles, what are the surfaces, what are the, where is the cutting edges and all those things. So, chapter 2 B deals with cutting forces, normally types of cutting, there are two types of cutting, one is orthogonal cutting and oblique cutting. So, mostly we deal in this course is uh, orthogonal because this is an introductory course. The orthogonal cutting we also see the force relationships, shear angle relationship, determination of coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is most important thing, I mean to say is one of the most important thing because what are the frictional losses and what is the useful energy, what is the energy that is wasted in the process and all those things. Determination of stress strain and strain rates also we do, measurement of shear angles, comparison with the experiments and some of the empirical models also we see. So, continuing to this cutting forces, we also see introduction to oblique cutting. We do not go in deep to the oblique cutting, we do uh, partially what is the uh, oblique cutting and all those things, measurement of cutting forces, axial. So, in the measurement of cutting forces, we see how to measure experimentally the cutting forces like uh, axially loaded member, cantilever member, rings and all those things. Some of the things I will explain some of the things you may have to learn for, for the assignments. The dynamometer, how the dynamometer works, what are the its requirements, how it measured the forces, machine tool dynamometers and general remarks about it. Chapter 3, what we deal with is the tribology and surface roughness in machining. The tribology plays a very important role in the chip tool region that is called chip tool tribology, tool workpiece tribology and types of lubrication. There are three types of lubrication, one is boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication and hydrodynamic lubrication. Basically as a manufacturing engineer, if at all you see you require a hydrodynamic lubrication in the machining region, but however you do not achieve it, but to achieve that one how and what we have to do. I will teach in this course. The surface roughness, the surface roughness, how to get a good surface roughness, what is the problem in machining, what is the roughness depend on, on which input parameters it mostly depends and all those things. Types of surface roughness, determination of surface roughness in the machining, normally if your RA is proportional to F square by 8R and all those relationships I will teach you. The material removal and material removal rate the machinability of materials, the ease of machining is nothing but the machinability. So, how to machine different materials? In the chapter 3 B, we deal with the thermal aspects of machining. You can see in the picture how the thermal aspects are determining the tool temperatures and the chip temperatures and all those things. The cutting temperature, if you see the temperature distribution in machining, shear plane and chip tool interface, normally chip tool interface carries uh, highest temperature. So, heat transfer in machining. So, heat transfer means there is a temperature distribution and heat transfer to the three components that is the chip, tool and the workpiece, how the heat is transferred and the measurement of this temperature, tool work, thermocouple technique, infrared and other techniques 
also we will see and we also see some of the advanced thing that is called metallurgical changes due to temperature normally what are the metallurgical changes that takes place on the surface of the work piece. So, chapter 4 normally we deal with the tool wear and tool life. So, what are the tool wear mechanisms? There are uh, commonly said mechanisms are three, one is adhesion, abrasion and diffusion. So, what are the types of tool wear? Like you normally at the basic level we teach the flank wear and crater wear. However, there are many wear like notch wear, cutting edge wear and all those things. We may touch those also. The tool life. So, there are many criteria of tool life. So, some of the criteria we deal with where is variables affecting the tool life, what are the input conditions affect, what are the tool materials that affect and all those things. There are tool life equations. Normally, there are two commonly used equations. One is Taylor tool life equation, another one is modified Taylor tool life equation. So, chapter 4, we also deal with tool materials and tool coatings in order to improve the tool life. So, what are the tool materials available that is high speed steel, uncoated carbide and coated carbide, ceramics or cermets, CBN and diamond. Not only this, we also deal with some of the coating materials on the tools to improve the uh, machinability. There are many varieties, however, we deal with two types of coating, one is soft coatings and another then hard coatings. Soft coatings provide better lubrication and all those things. So, hard coatings provide uh, better to life. So, the coating techniques also we deal with what PVD, physical vapor deposition, chemical vapor deposition, radio frequency sputtering, laser coating and these are the things we see. At the same time, we also see the tool texturing in order to improve the uh, tool chip interface tribology we do the some of the nano texturing, micro texturing. So, that also we deal how this will improve the tool life. So, in the chapter 5, we deal with cutting fluids and the application as our course, if you see, it is the introduction to machining and machining fluids. So, machining fluids normally are the cutting fluids. So, this chapter also plays a very important role where you learn mostly about the cutting fluid basics as well as some of the advances in the cutting fluids like cutting fluids classification based on lubrication criteria based on uh, cooling criteria and all those things. What are the functions of the cutting fluids types of cutting fluids if you see the types of cutting fluids cutting fluid additives there are many additives uh, which improve the performance of cutting fluids like uh, biocides, emulsifier, rust inhibitors and all those things at the same time. These are mechanically very important, but if you see the environmentally they are slightly adverse effective. So, they causes some of the problems to the operator and all those things. So, how to find a some optimum solution and all those things we will study in this chapter. Emissions and health hazards, rheology of the cutting fluids. Normally, the rheology is nothing but the science of flow and deformation. In this case, since the cutting fluid is a liquid. Normally, what is the thing that we study is the flow properties. So, if you know the better flow properties of the cutting fluid, if we can design a cutting fluid with better flow properties, what will happen? The flowability will increase to the intricate regions of the chip tool interface and the flank surface and workpiece interface. So, that it will improve the tool life at the same time it will give the better surface roughness. So, the rheology aspects also we study. We study the biodegradability because after the multiple utilization of this cutting fluid, if you dump into the uh, nearby water bodies or the soil bodies, it will deteriorate the that ecosystem depend on the whether you are dumping into the water or whether you are dumping into the uh, soil, it will destroy, I cannot say completely destroy, it will have its own impact on that one. Okay. So, the cutting fluid applications, if we see the cutting fluid application normally you can apply flood cooling, minimum quantity lubrication, high pressure, there are many varieties of application techniques are there. At the same time, these application techniques will vary depend on their standoff distance from the machining region, angle of impingement, whether you are putting 45 degrees, whether you are putting 90 degrees or whether you are putting 60 degrees and all those things it will vary if at all I want to send 
to the chip tool interface at what angle if I send and so that it will have the maximum effect that all things we will study. So, area of cooling if at all I am increasing the standoff distance what will happen my area of covering will be obviously increases, but the thing I want is the optimum area. So, for that purpose what will be my standoff distance if my standoff distance is very less. So, it can cover only less area if my standoff distance is more. So, my covering area will be more, but I have to design my standoff distance so that my area of cooling will be the machining region. So, once I calculate or experimentally measure my area of machining depend on that I can play with this input parameters like standoff distance, angle of impingement, so that the area of cooling and lubrication will be proper. So, as you know the cutting fluid application techniques there are different techniques that I have already told you that uh, MQL and high pressure techniques and all those things. So, chapter 5 B we deal with some of the eco friendly cutting fluids how to develop the eco friendly cutting fluids. So, biodegradation of cutting fluid how to do the biodegradation. So, that the chemical oxygen demand biological oxygen demand what is this chemical oxygen demand what is this biological oxygen demand what is a hydraulic retention time effect of cutting fluid on operator see that means that what are the effects of the cutting fluids on operator what is its causes if it is enters into the nose what will happen if it uh, falls on his skin what will happen these are the things we will study the effect of cutting fluid on the environment. So, it will causes how it causes various adverse effect to the environment water pollution soil pollution and all these things we study. So, chapter 6 we deal with multi point machining processes which is also some of the textbooks call it as practical machining processes. So, we do the uh, study about introduction to multi point machining processes. So, we start with milling process introduction to milling what is undeformed chip thickness forces how the better surface finish is achieved in this milling process. Then we go to the introduction to drilling process and we see it is slightly the introduction mechanism of that one and mechanics of that one forces surface finish and undeformed thick thickness. So, we also study about the tapping process how to make internal and external threads on it using the tapping process. The broaching is another uh, process where if at all we want to do for the high aspect ratio applications the sawing if at all you want to do the parting operations we can use the sawing operation and gear cutting operation how to do the gear cutting operation and all those things. In the chapter 7 we see the abrasive machining processes it comes under the multi point cutting tool, but it is one of the abrasive processes basically ok. So, the grinding process is one of the abrasive processes where we study about the wheel specification how to design the grinding wheel classification thermal aspects of grinding we and the conventional finishing process uh, like lapping honing what are the effects of uh, these processes on the surface finish of the product lapping gives very better surface honing gives not only the surface finish it also gives cross hatch patterns how it will generate this generation is due to the reciprocation and rotary motions of the tool. What is inter uh, what is super finishing operation drag finishing vibratory finishing these are all the finishing processes that are commonly used for the bio implants. So, at the end of this course you should also see the practicality of this process and practicality of this course you should appreciate the course whenever you see ok we have studied the basics now we have to apply for these mechanisms to the advanced applications. So, we also see the applications ok. Chapter 8 it is completely introduction to the advances in metal cutting operations like hard machining what is hard machining till now we have studied normal machining what is hard machining whenever we were we are machining the hard materials normally the HRC that is Rockwell hardness value is above 54 or 55 not only that it will depend your uh, input parameters also. So, normally it will depend on the uh, workpiece hardness basically. So, high speed machining whenever you are working or whenever you are operating the uh, up this machining process at very high speeds. So, 
uh, in terms of milling it is tool rotation in terms of turning it is workpiece rotation. So, they based on the rotary element this will decide diamond turning, diamond turning normally it comes under the one of the finishing processes, but it is one of the advances in machining process. Vibration assisted machining normally vibrations are provided to the tool, so that uh, it will enhance the machinability. Machining with rotary tools, thin wall machining, thin wall machining also plays a important in aerospace applications. Laser assisted machining, normally laser assisted machining is one of the advanced processes because if at all I want to machine a brittle material, normally the in the conventional machining process if you see, if I want to machine a brittle material with uh, tool, normally in the conventional machining the tool is much much harder than workpiece. So, what will happen? There is a chance of brittle fracture. In order to avoid that what is happen, uh, what the researchers do is just they pass the laser on the workpiece surface ahead of the tool, so that it will partially soften the workpiece. That means, we are converting the brittle material into ductile regime or ductile mode, then we are doing the machining operation with the conventional cutting tool. So, that is nothing but ductile regime machining of brittle materials. So, indirectly what we are doing is we are converting the brittle material into the ductile mode, then we are machining it that is called laser assisted machining process. Then we also look for the cutting fluids, what are the advanced cutting fluids that are used in high speed machining, hard machining and machining of advanced material like, like high speed machining. The basic uh, drawback of high speed machining is temperature will be very high how to overcome this one. So, you need to choose the cutting fluids whose cooling ability is higher. There our cooling ability is most important factor rather than lubrication. In a hard machining operation lubrication should be higher, cooling can be lower. Only thing is that it cannot be 0, but the thing is that you have to optimize the both the things that is what I mean. Okay. So, see we also study about machining of advanced materials, some of the advanced materials as per now is concerned biomaterials. So, if at all I want to machine this neem plant materials, how I have to do it? Because whenever if I do the temperature is very high and if I am using very hard tools what will happen? If the temperature is very high this surface what will happen is metallurgically changes which hampers the operator's health when after some time of the implant inside. So, in order to prevent all these things we have to take care of this material when the machining operation is going on. The aerospace materials titanium alloys, it is very difficult to machine the titanium alloys because the heat transferring heat dissipation ability of that material is low. Whenever you are doing the machining operation, the temperature stays mostly on the surface which will impart to the tool. So, the thermal softening of the tool takes place and the tool life will goes down. So, we have to take some precautions while machining the aerospace materials. Machining of smart materials we do, machining of the electronic materials and machining of polymers and composites. So, we also deal with machining of slightly composites when because the composites contains the reinforcement as well as matrix. So, whenever it is the tool is touching reinforcement what is the physics, whenever it is touching the matrix what is the physics all these things we study. Okay. So, that is all about my course introduction and uh, thank you for registering for my course and from next class onwards we deal each and everything in detail in the course introduction to machining and machining fluids. Thank you.